I'm Latoya Matthews and welcome to my show. Today's show is going to be really interesting. We're doing sewing 101. And today we're going to make this dress that I'm wearing. Now this is a very simple dress. I don't want you all to get intimidated because this is a dress that you'll be able to make within an hour. The only thing that you need is just some stretch fabric. So let's get to stitching. Okay, let's get started. Now the dress that I had on is the dress that we'll be making today. It's as easy as one, two, three. Even if you've never sewn before, trust me, you can do this. The only thing that you will need to start out is about two yards of fabric. Now the width, they come in 54 to 60 inch width with about two yards. That should be sufficient no matter what size you are. And also, I've got key points for beginners. Start with the st stretch fabric. You see this burgundy fabric that I'm using? It's stretch and it's a solid color. That way it hides all imperfections and flaws. If you start out with some type of fabric that has a pattern or it's multiple color, it's very difficult to line up your seams. Okay, now what I have, I make my own patterns in sewing one-on-one. And what I take is something that I enjoy, something that I like, and something that fits me perfectly. And I have this beautiful dress. I had this for um, a cousin's wedding that I attended and it fits perfectly. So now I'm going to use this as my pattern for the dress that I had on. First to start out, I just lay the dress down on my fabric. You're not going to believe how simple this dress is to make. And once the dress is down here, now remember the dress was asymmetrical. Um, one shoulder. Now with this particular dress that I have here, it's not like that. So what I'm going to do, I have a beautiful top that fits me great and it's over the shoulder. So I'm going to use the top portion of this and the bottom part of this dress and make one complete pattern. Now what you do is you line up the armholes. Very simple, right? And what I have here, I have some chalk. Now with this chalk, what I really like is that I can draw anywhere on my fabric and it's erasable so it won't stay on. And what it's going to do is give me a guideline to cut by. So I'm going to center everything on my fabric and then I'm going to draw around. Now for those of you who are unsure about the size of your dress, find something that fits comfortable, number one. And number two, when you're drawing your fabric around, leave about an inch to two inch seam allowance and what seam allowance that's something that once you stitch it it's, it's the leftover inch or two in case it's a little small you can always make it larger but tell you one thing if you make it too small it's really challenging to enlarge it so let's get started the first thing i'm going to do is use my chart and i'm just going around here and i'm giving about one inch seam allowance because since I know my size, because I've been sewing so long, it's really simple for me. So I just go around this dress like one, two, three. And I tell you, when I was younger, I could sew something within like 30 minutes. I have it done. And next thing you know, I would have it on and wearing it. I really enjoy sewing. It's a very creative process. And a lot of you all... That need a hobby sewing is an excellent hobby and you can save an awful lot of money making your own fashions and some people even turn it into a lucrative business so I'm gonna go around here for the for the top portion for it to get that one shoulder effect okay now it's as simple as that now as you can see the basic dress is right here See how simple it is? Now what I'm going to do is to cut around this 
and that's my dress and I'm gonna follow these seams and sew them up this dress is so simple but if you went to the store and bought this dress you would be surprised you probably paid close to a hundred dollars in some stores for a simple dress like this that's why I tell you it once you get started it's extremely addicting you would love to sew and for a lot of you moms, this is an excellent hobby to get your teenagers involved in. Or even, not even teenagers, because young kids can also sew. There's no age limit on sewing. So I'm going to follow this all the way around. I'm going to cut this out, my pattern. And I'm going to have me a sexy, sexy dress to wear. I have a girlfriend who's having a party. And I plan to wear this dress to her affair. Everybody knows me, knows that I make most of my clothing. And so they're not surprised when I show up with something. They're like, oh, did you make that? That's the first thing that comes out their mouth all the time. Did you make that? <laughs> so I'll be able to say, yes, I did make this dress. And that's one thing that got me into really sewing is when I was younger, I would make things and everybody would come and say, oh, you made that automatically. And I always wonder why. I started when I was about in the seventh grade so of course they knew because it would look so phony I mean it looked it didn't look professional so the task for me was my goal was to start making clothes that no one would be able to tell if I made them or if I purchased them from the store it took me about a year to really get my craft down but I tell you by the time I was in ninth grade what are you about 15 years old my clothes look just like they came from the store Okay, and that's it. The dress is cut out. Now, as you can see right here, this is the basic thing for your dress. Now, the only thing is to do is let's get stitching. Okay, first thing we want to do is to line up our seams. Now, I know a lot of you all will probably feel a bit intimidated, but do not feel intimidated. I guarantee you that you'll be able to make this dress. We've already cut out our pattern. The only thing we have to do now is just to stitch it up. Now, I recommend that you invest in a good sewing machine. A lot of these cheaper models that they have out there that you can buy at any discount store for a couple hundred dollars. Unfortunately, what happens is that's what you get. You can't really sew. The thread gets called, it, it knots up, and it is very frustrating. So invest in a good machine. Now go to a secondhand store and a lot of good machines are older models, something that was out maybe in the 70s or the 80s. A lot of these singers and brothers, they're really good machines and you can buy one for a little of nothing that's refurbished. So check out those secondhand stores. Okay, now first thing we're gonna do is to line up our seams. And if you take a look here, your sewing machine has different lines on it. Each line that's on this sewing machine, those are excellent guidelines for your stitching. And that's how you're able to keep a straight seam when you're beginning. Now, I'm going to line up my seam here. And since basically I already know a lot of stuff, so a lot of things that I'm telling you, I necessarily don't follow anymore because I know. And I know this dress here is probably about an inch seam allowance on both sides for it to fit me. So let's get going. Now, every seam that you start, I want you to go forward and backwards. That's to reinforce it to make sure it doesn't come apart. Because I tell you, you don't want to be stepping in your dress and the seams come loose. I shouldn't even picture that. Um, place that in your brain for a picture. Because believe me, as long as you have a good sewing machine, some good thread, you won't have to worry about that. So, we're going to sew this baby up. Use the exact same color thread, a solid fabric. That way you will not have to worry about any mistakes that you make. I used to spend all day sewing when I was younger. I made everything I, I wore except for my underwear. I even made a coat one season for the spring. Now every time you have to adjust your fabric, make sure you place the needle down. That way the fabric won't slip. And also for beginners, if you like to, what you can do at the seams here, you can put pins in them. And those pins will help you keep the guideline during your sewing. Since I know already, I don't have to use that. But just in case, if you're wondering how to keep it straight and you're having problems, take your time and just put a couple pins there. I'll tell you, with sewing one-on-one, -on -one, we take a lot of shortcuts. But 
the end result is the exact same. That you have a beautiful dress that didn't take you years to make. And what I, another thing I love about sewing your own clothes because they fit perfectly. Everybody thinks that you've had something tailor made. Again, I reinforce that in, so I'm going to flip it over here and sew. Now, I always sew from the top down because when you're making your hem, you can always cut it and even it out, and it's just easier. So, I flipped it over and I'm sewing it. Now, basically, you can see the dress right here. So, it's going to be so simple just to sew up everything together. And the way that we do with sewing one-on-one -on -one by making our own patterns, it saves so much time because, believe me, if you bought, and it saves money also. Because these patterns nowadays, when I started sewing patterns like 50, believe it or not, you could get a pattern for 50 cents to a dollar. Now, some of these patterns are up to $20. I couldn't believe it. But with this, you don't have to pay the cost for a pattern. And also, when you have a pattern, you have to cut the pattern out. You have to lay it down on your fabric, pin it to your fabric, cut it out, then remove the pins. With this, you see how easy I did. I just laid down a dress. I traced around it and cut it out. That was very simple. And from the basic, once you know your size, and another thing that you may want to do, and I'll show you later in the program, is they take your body measurements from the largest part of your body, which for me is around my hip area. And if you have any doubt that something doesn't fit, it's just to measure it. If your hip area, let's say it's a 36, then you probably want to sew with a 38 or 39 inches. That way you have an inch to an inch and a half on each side at seam allowance. A lot of people don't put much thought into the clothes that they wear. But if you really think about it, how much money you can save sewing, a lot of people will do it. And as I stated before, it's an excellent hobby for you to share with your kid. When I first started sewing, I hooked up my niece. She came one year. She must have been about 11 years old. And what I did with her was, one summer, she looked so bored. So I told her, we're going to make a dress. And I told her, this is sewing one-on-one. I laid down a piece of fabric. We just cut it out. It was a straight dress. It was um, a boat neckline, which is just a straight neckline, and some armholes. Boy, we made that dress. She put on a belt. She looked so cute in it. And from that one sewing lesson, she developed an entire career. She, she's a graduate of Parsons Fashion Institute in um, New York. And she's also uh, went to Paris to study. I just, I'm bragging a little bit. I just love her so much. Her name is Kiana. So we're going to stitch this all up. And I'm going to have this dress hugging every curve. <laughs> Now, what I'm going to do to make sure that it fits great, I'm going to place some darts in the back of the dress. Now, to contour your body, your waistline, and your backside, since nothing's flat on your body, you have a lot of curves, I'm going to place two darts in the back of my dress. Now, don't get discouraged. They're very simple to make. The simplest thing, I'm just going to fold my dress in half. Whenever you fold something in half, what you do is you just get the center. Let me move this out the way for a second. I'm going to get the center of my dress here. And then I'm going to decide where I want my darts. Okay, now, as I stated, I want two darts to help contour. So, what I'm going to do, first I find the center. I line up all of my seams here. And my armholes match up everything. Okay. So, I'm deciding... And this is not um, brain surgery, surgery or anything like that. So I'm just going to guess where I would want my darts to start. And I want them to start here. So I'm going to draw a line. And I want them to end about here. Again, I'm just going to draw a line. 
Now that lets me know the center of it. Now I'm going to open up and I see where the center is here. Now with each dart here, I want it to be the exact same on each side. I want it to be even. So I don't have a measurement or anything. If you like, you can take a measurement and measure how many inches you like. With me, I use in sewing one-on-one, the measurements I use are my hands. Each one of my digits here, my fingers, they're about an inch. So what I'm going to do is from my thumb to the end of my finger, I'm going to mark it. That's why I want to dart. Now, the same thing if you would like. Instead of using your fingers like I did, if you want to, you can actually get a tape measure and measure it yourself. So, now I guess that's about two inches. Let's see how right I am. Well, it's two and a half inches. So, all you have to do is just mark two and a half. Is it two and a half? Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. So, I'm just going to fold it in half here. And once I fold that in half, let me do one more thing. I, since I sew so much on my own, a lot of the steps, I don't even think about what I'm doing. But you all probably want to measure how far you're going here. Okay, that is, let's make it, um, it's going to be 13 inches. So let's make it an even 12 inches. So half of that will be 6 inches. So with six inches is the center of my dart. So from here to here and six is in the middle. Okay. And we got from here to here and six is in the middle. Okay guys. Now. Okay. Now with your lines. We're making two simple darts. I'm folding them in half, and I know where the center is because I've marked it right here, which is there are 12 inch darts and the center is six. And the only thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make it come in and out. That's very simple, see? In and out. And with that right there, when you turn it over, that's what's gonna make it um, contour in and give it a really nice form fit around your waistline. So let's get the stitching on that. And I'm just gonna go in and out. This simple little dart right here is what's going to bring this dress and make it really fit like it's tailor made for you. And one thing about making, when you make your own designs, you don't have to worry about anybody having your dress on. But don't you hate that you go somewhere and spend all that money on a dress and you go and see somebody else with the dress, even if it's in a different color, it's like, oh my goodness. So with this, you will not have to worry, honey. You'll be the only one wearing this dress. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn it over so I can give you a sample of what I'm talking about. And then you'll be like, oh, is that it, Latoya? See how smooth that is? Now that right there, it takes the waistline in and it makes sure that it doesn't buckle. Now the only thing I have to do is just stitch up the top. And what I'm going to do to finish off everything, we're going to do hand stitching. And I'm going to show you that it's a complete blind stitch. And what I'm going to do with that blind stitch is we're going to stitch all of this hand stitch, everything down. And that's what gives it that professional look is the hand stitching. A lot of the clothes that they're making nowadays, I think people are really getting ripped off. They're actually selling things with a raw edge. Or they actually just cut with scissors, you know. But not me. We are going to have this beautiful dress. Okay. And that's my dress. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try this on so I can see how well it fits. And if there's any adjustments to be made, now is the time to do them before I place my hem stitch. You see how much seam allowance I have here? This particular seam allowance is what I would use in case the dress is a little tight. What I would do is I would pick the seam loose and move it over. But since I know my size, more than likely this fits perfectly. The only thing I'll probably like to do sometime, I like to taper in the bottom so it can really show my hourglass figure or it can enhance it and make it look like I have an hourglass figure. That's one of the tricks of sewing for yourself that you can enhance the waistline 
and also the hemline and it makes it look like you have the curves even if you don't okay so let me try it on right fast and then we'll see where we're going next but the next step is just the hemline go to a second hand sewing machine place and get yourself a nice machine this machine that I have now this is the first new machine that I've ever bought for myself ever since I was a teenager I've been buying buying used machines yep and they've been working just fine the one machine I had oh I think it was almost I hate to tell you how many years I had it because then I'll be telling on myself how old I am but let me just tell you it definitely lasted several decades <laughs> And when it finally gave out, it was like it was like saying goodbye to a dear friend. I love that machine. It was a singer, so singers are pretty close to me. I always buy singers, but although I have had a brother before in the past, when I was real young, my mother always bought me a new machine. And the first machine she bought me wasn't an exp expensive machine. And that's when I found out that those machines, they don't work very well. And then she went out and got me a singer, and I love that singer. And it would mess up. So when I took it in for repairs and the man told me, although it was a portable machine, every time I took the machine from room to room, because I was so everywhere. I was so in my bedroom. I was so in the kitchen. I was so in the living room. Anywhere I would set up a little TV table and off I would get to sewing. Okay. Anyway, he told me to just leave it, set it up in one spot. And so there. So that's what I did. So I would advise you, if you do buy a portable machine, just put it in one spot. Don't carry it from room to room. And be careful because every time you knock it about, you may jar something. Okay, so I've cut all my seam allowance away. Now the next thing what I'm going to do is show you how... Oops, let's get all this stuff away. Okay, the first next thing I'm going to do is we're going to put a hem in it. The blind stitch hem and what we're going to do I'm going to hem around the neckline the arm armhole and also the hemline and this blind stitch I love it because that's what to me that's what makes it look professional now for all of you beginners out there I'm going to show you an easy way to make sure it's perfect and that's simple simply is to press your seams down first once you press them then you can pin them and you can sew them since I already know how to sew, let me just show you how I do it. As I told you, I measure everything by my fingers. So most of the time I sew about an inch. And I just turn it over here and sew. So, and as long as I'm keeping my fingers, I know it's an inch. A couple of times just for my starting point. That's it. Okay, now I'm going to show you the blind stitch. You just pick up a little bit of the fabric here and the bottom and pull. Okay, let's do that one more time. Let me do this. Okay, a little bit of fabric here, just a tinch, and you pull through. A little bit of fabric here, and you pull through. A little bit of fabric here and you pull through and this is what you call a blind hem stitch or some people call it a whipping stitch because it goes around and around and pull it through and I'm gonna do this all the way around my neckline and I'm going to do it all around the armhole and the hem and right when I get to the pin I always take out the pin because I don't want to get my thread caught on it when I first um, began sewing I took a little sewing class in seventh grade which was like a semester and my mom, she was really ingenious because what she did was, not only did she give me a little sewing machine, she bought me some fabric. But the only way I would get new fabric, I had to complete the outfit that I was working on. So I made like little pants and uh, maybe a skirt or something, something very simple. And I tell you, some of that stuff that I made, I would just get through with it just so I can get to the next thing and some of the outfits that were out during that period of time they were a little bit more advanced than I was and honey some of that stuff I had I was so they started um, at the junior high school started making jokes about me and talking about homemade and 
you know, I laughed it off, but in my mind, I made it a point that one day I'm going to be able to sew so nice and professional, they will never know. And I did that because because by the time I got in high school, they all wanted me to start making things for them. They'd be like, oh, Latoya, that's so beautiful. But guess what? I was like, nope, I don't think so. I didn't sew for anyone but myself. Unfortunately, that was very selfish, but so I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> It was easy as one, two, three. It was a very simple dress. And you see how beautiful it turned out? All you have to do is to make sure that you use a solid stretch fabric. And everything else is as easy as one, two, three. You notice the contour that we have in the back. That's what we got when we used our darts. And everything else from here to here is what we cut out. The exact pattern, we just kept it simple. Okay, if you have any questions or concerns or you would like some additional information regarding Sewing 101, you can email me at LatoyaMatthewsShow at Yahoo.com. Send me an email and let me know what you like about this show. And also, if you would like to know some other sewing tips that I have, because as I said, I've been sewing for years and I have tons of tricks that can give you shortcuts and to, so you can make a professional looking garment. It looks tailor-made for you. So check in on us again and be looking forward to the LaToya Matthews Show. Take care.